Hi, my name is Simeon Neil Asher, and the trigger point of the week this week is actually three trigger points. We're going to look at rectus abdominis, the internal and the external obliques. Uh, they share similar kind of uh, causative factors, um, but they're, they're extremely interesting um, and actually uh, connected through to sort of visceral pain as well. So let's explore them together. So let's um, let's start with some of the anatomy. Um, well, let's start with the rectus abdominis. So let's search the rectus. So immediately we can see here that the rectus itself uh, is the six pack muscle, uh, takes its origin from the ziphy, from the part of the sternum there, inserts into the pubic bone, has some slips into the uh, linea alba, uh, into the sort of fascia of the abdomen. And um, if we start with this one, we can see that the pain map is quite interesting um, because uh, often people come in with pain in the, the lumbar spine or, or in the, the thorax, depending on where, where the trigger points are. So someone that's got an abdominal trigger point can come in with the pain in the, the sort of back of the, in the, in the spine itself. So interesting in terms of, of that. The other place that we can see the pain is, is locally, uh, sometimes sort of down across the, the, the front of the hip, uh, sort of the front of the ilium, sort of lower pelvis. So um, let's combine those with some of the other obliques. So if we start with the external oblique. Now, what's interesting with the, with the obliques, uh, ob obliquus exter thank you, obliquus externus abdominis. So um, if we look at the, the external oblique again, they take their, it takes its origin from the lower ribs uh, and inserts into the iliac, sort of around the iliac crest, wraps around the body. And I want you just to look at the direction of the fibers. So it's from the ribs and it comes downwards, as opposed to the internal oblique that does the opposite. So um, very much uh, people talk about this kind of um, uh, sort of stabilization, this kind of ring of stability, these, these uh, uh, pelvic stability um, coming from, this, uh, from, the, from the obliques as well. You can see how they wrap around the body. Uh, the core stability, they call it. Um, uh, because of its uh, kind of large area, we, and it's a multi-penate muscle, we can get trigger points um, in, in various areas, um, and especially sort of down by the sort of rectus sheath. So here's the linear alba. And let's look at some of these pain maps. So interestingly, uh, we can actually get uh, external oblique can cause trigger points into the genitalia, uh, into the testicles, um, and that's something that we do see clinically, uh, people that are coming in with testicular pain and they've had um, multiple uh, investigations, no one's been able to help them and actually trigger points in the external oblique uh, have been reliably shown, um, I've seen it clinically many times, of able to help testicular pain. The other thing that's um, really interesting is viscous pain or, or viscera somatic or somatovisceral pain. Um, and there's some really interesting studies done uh, in Italy, um, looking at the the repetition of, of viscous pathology causing uh, sensitivity, hyperesthesia, uh, hypersensitivity around the skin of the abdomen and, and associated with trigger points. And actually, the more repeated um, uh, sort of gynecological problems, uterus problems, uh, kidney problems, um, kidney stones, the, these kind of uh, these kind of visci can cause associations with trigger points and actually the more uh, pathology or the more often you get viscous pathology like kidney stones are repetitive the more established these trigger points are and conversely treating them can actually uh, help the viscous itself so we're very much uh, osteopathically we, we've classically looked at viscerosomatic somatovisceral pain and here's some really good uh, examples of that so we can see an extensive interesting pain map uh, for the for the external oblique and I, I find that actually quite a beautiful map to look at here so uh, if we look at the internal oblique like we said uh, obliquus internus abdominis so we said here again similar kind of um, uh, but lower down uh, similar kind of uh, origins and insertions the lower costal sort of margin the lower ribs all the way down to the, the back of the pelvis some of this sort of lumbar fascia also lumbo pelvic fascia uh, it's deeper obviously to the external oblique hence internal and again the fiber directions is the opposite it's up so we have this 
kind of mesh of the internal and external oblique, a smaller uh, origin and insertion than the external, and thus uh, slightly different pain maps. Um, tend to be local, uh, McBurney's point, uh, sometimes with, uh, with uh, people that have uh, appendix, appendix problems, appendicitis, um, and sort of pain in the flank, in the, the side of the body. Um, now, all of these muscles, the erectus, the internal and external oblique, they all have um, the same kind of onset, which is either from direct trauma, um, sort of in the gym, sit-ups, doing that kind of uh, flexion, abdominal flexion incorrectly. Of course, people, there's different opinions on core stability. Some people think it's incredibly important, some people don't. But what, what the, the thesis, the hypothesis is that when we have a, a lumbar disc pathology, we have a reflex change in the, the tone, the tonus of the, the, the abdominal muscles. Of course, if people are overweight, visceral, visceral sort of uh, pathologies, they're going to have weak internal external obliques. Um, and, and, and again, these are factors for low back pain. Um, other things are sort of coughing, sneezing, because we can see how the internal external oblique are, are related to the, the lower rib function as well. So, so that's, again, one of the causes for trigger points is overload, uh, coughing, sneezing, or direct trauma, or um, such uh, to, the, to the abdominal muscles themselves. But as I said, the three of them work together, worth considering the rectus abdominis if someone's coming in with lumbar pain, lumbar pathology, low back pain. Um, and actually, it's one of the muscles I treat a lot when someone comes in with low back pain because of this kind of anterior, posterior balance between the two of them. So external oblique, internal oblique, rectus abdominis, the trio. And I um, hope you enjoyed that video. And we very much look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks for watching.